the Schwedigen Pagoda. A euro euro a euro a euro a euro a euro a euro a euro to the first a euro a euro a sha a euro, TET unregistered trademark Kyo a euro, officially named Schwedigon Zadi Dor and also known as the Great Dagon Pagoda and the Golden Pagoda, is a gilded stupa located in Yangon, Myanmar. The 99 meters tall pagoda is situated on Singatara Hill, to the west of Kandorg Lake, and dominates the Yangon skyline. Shwedagon Pagoda is the most sacred Buddhist pagoda in Myanmar, as it is believed to contain relics of the four previous Buddhas of the present Kalpa. These relics include the staff of Kakuzandar, the water filter of Kota the first Agamana, a piece of the robe of Kasapa, and eight strands of hair from the head of Gautama. History Historians and archaeologists maintain that the pagoda was built by the Mon people between the 6th and 10th centuries CE. However, according to legend, the Schwedagon Pagoda was constructed more than 2,600 years ago, making it the oldest Buddhist stupa in the world. According to tradition, Tafasa and Balaka are Euro II merchant brothers from the city of Balkh in what is currently Afghanistan. A Euro met the Lord Gautama Buddha during his lifetime and received eight of the Buddha's hairs. The brothers traveled to Burma and, with the help of the local ruler, King Okalepa, found Singatara Hill, where relics of other Buddhas preceding Gautama Buddha had been enshrined. When the king opened the golden casket in which the brothers had carried the hairs, incredible things happened. The stupa fell into disrepair until the 14th century, when King Binyayu rebuilt it to a height of 18 m. A century later, Queen Binyatha raised its height to 40 m. She terraced the hill on which it stands, paved the top terrace with flagstones and assigned land and hereditary slaves for its maintenance. Binyatha yielded up the throne to her son-in-law Hamazidi in 1472, retiring to Dagon. During her last illness she had her bed placed so that she could look upon the gilded dome of the stupa. The Mon face of the Schwedagon inscription catalogues a list of repairs beginning in 1436 and finishing during Hamazidi's reign. By the beginning of the 16th century, Schwedagon Pagoda had become the most famous Buddhist pilgrimage site in Burma. A series of earthquakes during the following centuries caused damage. The worst damage was caused by a 1768 earthquake that brought down the top of the stupa, but King Xinbyushin later raised it to its current height of 99 m. A new crown umbrella was donated by King Mind and Min in 1871 after the annexation of Lower Burma by the British. An earthquake of moderate intensity in October 1970 put the shaft of the crown umbrella visibly out of alignment. A scaffold was erected and extensive repairs were made. From February 22, 2012 to March 7, 2012, devotees celebrated the annual Schwedagon Pagoda Festival for the first time since 1988, when it was banned by the Governing State Law and Order Restoration Council. Celebrations began at the Rahu corner of the Pagoda's Yinbian platform, at the Mahapatan and All Maya Central platforms, at 9 a.m. on February 22. The Schwedagon Pagoda Festival, which is the largest pagoda festival in the country, begins during the new moon of the month of Taban in the traditional Burmese calendar and continues until the full moon. The pagoda is listed on the Yangon City Heritage List. Design the base of the stupa is made of bricks covered with gold plates. Above the base are terraces that only monks and other males can access. Next is the bell-shaped part of the stupa. Above that is the turban, then the inverted alms bowl, inverted and upright lotus petals, the banana bud and then the umbrella crown. The crown is tipped with 5,448 diamonds and 2,317 rubies. Immediately before the diamond bud is a flag-shaped vein. The very topa euro the diamond Buddha euro is tipped with a 76-carat diamond. The gold seen on the stupa is made of genuine gold plates, covering the brick structure and attached by traditional rivets. People all over the country, as well as monarchs in its history, have donated gold to the pagoda to maintain it. The practice continues to this day after being started in the 15th century by the Queen Shin Sobu who gave her weight in gold. There are four entrances, each leading up a flight of steps to the platform on Singatara Hill. A pair of giant leogryphs guards each entrance. 
the eastern and southern approaches have vendors selling books, good luck charms, images of the Buddha, candles, gold leaf, incense sticks, prayer flags, streamers, miniature umbrellas and flowers. It is customary to circumnavigate Buddhist stupas in a clockwise direction. In accordance with this principle, one may begin at the eastern directional shrine, which houses a statue of Kakuzandar, the first Buddha of the present Kalpa. Next, at the southern directional shrine, is a statue of the second Buddha, Ko to the first Agamana. Next, at the western directional shrine, is that of the third Buddha, Kasapa. Finally, at the northern directional shrine, is that of the fourth Buddha, Gautama. Rituals Most Burmese people are Theravada Buddhists, and many also follow practices which originated in Hindu astrology. Burmese astrology recognizes the seven planets of astrology a year the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. In addition, it recognizes two other planets, Rahu and Ketu. All the Burmese names of the planets are borrowed from Hindu astrology, but the Burmese Rahu and Ketu are different from the Hindu Rahu and Ketu. The Burmese consider them to be distinct and separate planets, whereas Hindu astrology considers them to be either the dragon's head and tails, or ascending and descending nodes. To the Burmese people, Ktu is the king of all planets. As in many other languages, the Burmese name the seven days of their week after the seven planets, but Burmese astrology recognizes an eight-day week, with Wednesday being divided into two days. Until 6 p.m. It is Wednesday, but after 6 p.m. until midnight it is Rahu's day. It is important for Burmese Buddhists to know on which day of the week they were born, as this determines their planetary post. There are eight planetary posts, as Wednesday is split in two. They are marked by animals that represent the day a Euro Garuda for Sunday, Tiger for Monday, Lion for Tuesday, Tusked Elephant for Wednesday morning, Tuskless Elephant for Wednesday afternoon, Mouse for Thursday, Guinea Pig for Friday and Naga for Saturday. Each planetary post has a Buddha image and devotees offer flowers and prayer flags and pour water on the image with a prayer and a wish. At the base of the post behind the image is a guardian angel, and underneath the image is the animal representing that particular day. The base of the stupa is octagonal and also surrounded by eight small shrines. It is customary to circumnavigate Buddhist stupas in a clockwise direction. The pilgrim, on his way up the steps of the pagoda, buys flowers, candles, colored flags and streamers. These are to be placed at the stupa in a symbolic act of giving, which is an important aspect of Buddhist teaching. There are donation boxes located in various places around the pagoda to receive voluntary offerings which may be given to the pagoda for general purposes. Foreigners are charged $8 for the use of the lifts which take you up to the main pagoda terrace and the minding of footwear. Schwedegen in literature, Rudyard Kipling described his 1889 visit to Schwedegen Pagoda ten years later in From Sea to Sea and other sketches, letters of travel, war and invasion. In 1608 the Portuguese adventurer Felipe de Brito e Nicot, known as Ngar Inca to the Burmese, plundered the Schwedegen Pagoda. His men took the 300-ton Great Bell of Tomazidi, donated in 1485 by King Tomazidi. Tobrito's intention was to melt the bell down to make cannons, but it fell into the Bago River when he was carrying it across. To this date, it has not been recovered. Two centuries later, the British landed on May 11, 1824 during the First Anglo-Burmese War. They immediately seized and occupied the Schwedegen Pagoda and used it as a fortress until they left two years later. There was pillaging and vandalism, and one officer's excuse for digging a tunnel into the depths of the stupa was to find out if it could be used as a gunpowder magazine. The Mahaganda Bell, a 23-ton bronze bell cast in 1779 and donated by King Singu and popularly known as the Singamin Bell, was carried off with the intention to ship it to Kolkata. It met the same fate as the Tomazidi Bell and fell into the river. When the British failed in their attempts to recover it, the people offered to help provided it could be restored to the stupa. The British, thinking it would be in vain, agreed, upon which divers went in to tie hundreds of bamboo poles underneath the bell and floated it to the surface. 
There has been much confusion over this bell and the 42-ton Tharawadimin bell donated in 1841 by Tharawadimin along with 20 kilograms of gold plating. This massive ornate bell hangs in its pavilion in the northeast corner of the stupa. A different but less plausible version of the account of the Singamin bell was given by Lieutenant J. E. Alexander in 1827. This bell can be seen hung in another pavilion in the northwest of the pagoda platform. The Second Anglo-Burmese War saw the British reoccupation of the Schwedagon in April 1852, only this time the stupa was to remain under their military control for 77 years, until 1929, although the people were given access to the pyre. During the British occupation and fortification of the pagoda, Lord Maung Htaw Lay, the most prominent Mon Burmese in British Burma, successfully prevented the British army from looting of the treasures. He eventually restored the pagoda its former glory and status with the financial help from the British rulers. This extract is from the book A Euro OEA 20th Century Burmese Matriarch A Euro written by his great-great-great-granddaughter Kin Theda. A year away after retirement he moved back to Rangoon areas still in Burmese hands but very soon destined for the next annexation. He was again caught up in war but this time he had a great fortune of supporting religious ventures and gaining tremendous merit. His good karma and leadership abilities led him to the task of saving the great Schwedagon pagoda from imminent destruction and sacking of its treasures by British troops in the Second Anglo-Burmese War. The Great Buddhist Shrine had been fortified by the British troops in the 1824 war and was again used as a fort in 1852. When he heard of the fortification and sacking of the shrine, he sent a letter of appeal directly to the British India office in London stopping the desecration. He then obtained compensation from the British Commissioner of Burma Mr. Fair and began the renovations of the pagoda in 1855 with public support and donations. He became the founding trustee of the Schwedagon Pagoda Trust and he was awarded the title of KSM by the British Raj for his public service. He died at the age of 95, bequeathing his prestige and high repute to his large family and descendants a Euro. Political Arena In 1920, students from Burma's only university met at a pavilion in the southwest corner of the Schwedagon Pagoda and planned a protest strike against the new University Act which they believed would only benefit the elite and perpetuate colonial rule. This place is now commemorated by a memorial. The result of the ensuing university boycott was the establishment of national schools financed and run by the Burmese people. This day has been commemorated as the Burmese National Day since. During the second university student strike in the history of 1936, the terraces of the Schwedagon were again where the student strikers camped out. In 1938, oil field workers on strike hiked all the way from the oil fields of Chalk and Yenanyon in central Burma to Rangoon to establish a strike camp at the Schwedagon Pagoda. This strike, supported by the public as well as students and came to be known as the 1300 Revolution after the Burmese calendar year was broken up by the police who, in their boots whereas Burmese would remove their shoes in pagoda precincts, raided the strike camps on the pagoda. The shoe question in the pagoda has always been a sensitive issue to the Burmese people since colonial times. The Burmese people had always removed shoes at all Buddhist pagodas. Hiram Cox, the British envoy to the Burmese court, in 1796, observed the tradition by not visiting the pagoda rather than take off his shoes. However, after the annexation of Lower Burma, European visitors as well as troops posted at the pagoda openly flouted the tradition. Udamaloka publicly confronted a police officer over wearing shoes at the pagoda in 1902. It was not until 1919 that the British authorities finally issued a regulation prohibiting footwear in the precincts of the pagoda. However, they put in an exception that employees of the government on official business were allowed footwear. The regulation and its exception clause moved to stir up the people and played a role in the beginnings of the nationalist movement. Today, no footwear nor socks are allowed on the pagoda. In January 1946, General Aung San addressed a mass meeting at the stupa, demanding independence now from the British with a thinly veiled threat of a general strike and uprising. Forty-two years later, on August 26, 1988, his daughter, 
Aung San Suu Kyi addressed another mass meeting of 500,000 people at the stupa, demanding democracy from the military regime and calling the 8888 uprising the second struggle for independence. Equals September 2007 protests equals, in September 2007, during nationwide demonstrations against the military regime and its recently enacted price increases, protesting monks were denied access to the pagoda for several days before the government finally relented and permitted them in. On September 24, 2007, 20,000 Bikhos and Thilashins marched at the Shwedagon Pagoda, Yangon. On Monday, 30,000 people led by 15,000 monks marched from Shwedagon Pagoda and passed the offices of Aung San Suu Kyi's opposition National League for Democracy Party. Comedian Zargana and Star Kyorthi brought food and water to the monks. On Saturday, monks marched to greet Aung San Suu Kyi, who is under house arrest. On Sunday, about 150 nuns joined the marchers. On September 25, 2007, 2,000 monks and supporters defied threats from Myanmar's junta. They marched to Yangon streets at Chwedagon Pagoda amid army trucks and the warning of Brigadier General Myint Maung not to violate Buddhist rules and regulations. On September 26, 2007, clashes between security forces and thousands of protesters led by Buddhist monks in Myanmar have left at least five protesters dead by Myanmar security forces, according to opposition reports in an anticipated crackdown. Earlier in the day security authorities used tear gas, warning shots and forced to break up a peaceful demonstration by scores of monks gathered around the Shwedagon Pagoda. The website reports that protesting monks were beaten and bundled into waiting army trucks, adding about 50 monks were arrested and taken to undisclosed locations. In addition, the opposition said soldiers with assault rifles have sealed off sacred Buddhist monasteries as well as other flashpoints of anti-government protests. It reports that the violent crackdown came as about 100 monks defied a ban by venturing into a cordoned-off area around the Shwedagon Pagoda, Myanmar's holiest Buddhist shrine. It says that authorities ordered the crowd to disperse, but witnesses said the monks sat down and began praying, defying the military government's ban on public assembly. Security forces at the pagoda struck out at demonstrators, and attacked several hundred other monks and supporters, the opposition website detailed. Monks were ushered away by authorities and loaded into waiting trucks while several hundred onlookers watched, witnesses said. Some managed to escape and headed towards the Suo Pagoda, a Buddhist monument and landmark located in Yangon city center. Replicas Upper Tizanti Pagoda Euro located in Naypyidaw the capital of Myanmar Euro is a replica of Shwedagon Pagoda. Completed in 2009, it is similar in many aspects to Shwedagon Pagoda, but its height is 30 cm less than that of Shwedagon. Another replica of Shwedagon Pagoda, 46.8 m in height, was constructed at Lumbini Natural Park in Beres Dorji, North Sumatra, Indonesia. Completed in 2010, the construction materials for this pagoda, were imported from Myanmar. Global Viper Sana Pagoda Euro located in Mumbai, India. Gallery. See also, History of Buddhism, Buddhism in Burma. Notes. Further reading, Martin, Steve. Lonely Planet Myanmar. Lonely Planet Publications. ISBN 1-74059-190-9. Elliot, Mark. Southeast Asia, The Graphic Guide. Trailblazer Publications. ISBN 1-873756-67-4. Winpei. Schwedgen. Printing and Publishing Corporation, Rangoon. Dictionary of Buddhism by Damien Keown ISBN 0-19-860560-9. External links, official website, official website of the Schwedagon Pagoda for the Schwedagon Pagoda Board of Trustees, The Legend of Schwedagon by Kin Myo Chit, My Child Life in Burma by Olive Jenny Beeksby 1880 Recollections of a Missionary's Daughter, Incorporated Detailed Description of King Minden's new HTI being erected, pages 111, 
Rudyard Kipling's description of Schwedigan Pagoda in 1889, Elizabeth Moore Conference The Schwedigan in British Burma Myanmar, Lieutenant J. E. Alexander's account, 1827, pages 153, Myanmar, time to say hello YouTube, seen upon the terrace of the Great Dagon Pagoda from 1826.